right, in this video, we're going to look at the mixed review part six. This covers problems 14 and 15 or problems similar to that found in the ATIT 6 study manual, the mathematics section quiz. We have two examples to work out here, but before we jump into those, uh, if you're just following along with these for the first time, please make sure you visit my website, idomath.weebly.com. Uh, these mixed review concepts in detail, and then I also have these mixed review videos, and I'm currently working on part six. That's what we're doing right now. So these two questions here, we're going to cover correlation as well as mean, median, mode, and range. And what we have here are eight test grades that a teacher recorded in her math class. Eight grades, we want to find the mean, the median, the mode, and the range of this data set. To find the mean, this is covered in some of those goals and objective videos that I have broken up back at my website. Feel free to check those out, but the mean is the average. And to find the average of these grades, we add up all eight of these grades together, and then we divide by eight. This will be the class average in this case. So let's go ahead and add up those eight grades, and then we're going to divide that sum by eight. And since we can use a calculator on the T's test, let's speed through this on the calculator. So the sum of all eight of these test grades is 633. Let's divide that by eight to find the class average. So the class average is 79.125. Now we could round this off, just be careful on the T's test, what it tells you to round to. I'm just going to round to the nearest whole number, so the class average is right around a 79. Now the next thing we want to find is the median. To find the median, that is the middle number. You have to put these grades in numerical order, either smallest to biggest or biggest to smallest. It does not matter, and then we want to find the middle number. But we have to be careful here because there are eight test grades. There is not going to be a middle number since we have an even number. And to show you that, let's list these test grades from smallest to biggest. So here are the eight test grades listed from smallest to biggest. And since we have an even number, again, we're not going to have a middle number here. We're going to be stuck right between this 74 and this 81. Uh, notice on the left-hand side of this blue line that I drew, there are four grades over here. And on the right-hand side, there's four grades as well. That's what always happens when you have an even number of pieces of data. If we had an odd number of pieces, then yes, we would have a middle number there. Think about that. Also, again, feel free to check out those uh, goals and objectives videos. But when you have an even number of pieces of data, we have to find the average of these two numbers. So therefore, what we want to do there is we want to take the 74 plus the 81, and we want to divide that by 2. We're trying to find the number that's in between 74 and 81. So taking 74 and then adding 81 to that, we're going to get 155. Clearly, that's not going to be the middle number, but if we take 155 and divide it by 2, again, just use your calculator there, we're going to have a median of 77.5. This is our median. And 77.5 is the number, even though, even though that 77.5 clearly does not show up up here, that is the middle number uh, for this data set. And it's, that's the number right in between 74 and 81. All right, the next piece is the mode. The mode is the data, pieces of data, or piece of data that occurs the most. And notice that we have two 74s and we have two 81s. You can have more than one mode. So our modes, or our mode is going to be a 74 and an 81 because they occur twice each, which is more than the other pieces of data or the frequency of the other pieces of data in our data set, our test grades. And last but not least, the range, the range of our data set. How do we find that? We take the max minus the min. So the range is equal to the biggest one, the max, and then we subtract the smallest grade. Now this is the range of our data. So the maximum, since we have our numbers in order, that'll be a 97. And then we subtract our minimum, which is a 66. So 97 minus 66, the range is going to be 31. That's the range of our data. So these are various types of statistics that we can gather uh, 
given some data set. And, um, you know, that's covering the number 14 in your ATIT study manual. You know, it covers all those different concepts, but I want to review those four pieces, mean, median, mode, and range in that problem there. So let's go on to number 15. So we're determined if the following situations below represent a positive or negative correlation. In the goals and objectives videos, we covered some of these, and now I want to review these again with you. A positive correlation, here's how I think about it. Feel free to read this right here in red, but a positive correlation. If one thing goes up, something else goes up. If one thing goes down, something else goes down. Basically, they both go in the same direction. You're talking about two variables here, and I'm going to emphasize those two variables to you as we cover uh, these four examples. These are our examples here. This one, this one, this one, and this one. Now, a negative correlation is when you have one thing going up and the other variable going down. Variable can be anything. Shoe size, uh, salary, weight, calories, speed. These are types of variables, things that have a numerical value to it. So positive correlation, they both go in the same direction. Negative correlation, as one thing goes up, the other thing goes down, or vice versa. So here we go. The more gasoline you put in your car, the farther it will go. So let's think about that. We have, you know, gasoline in our car, gallons. So as gallons go up, the more, as gallons go up, the distance that you can go will also go up as well. So think about that. As the gasoline increases, the distance that you can travel will increase as well. Therefore, we have a positive correlation here. Now, again, two things went up. As gasoline goes up, distance traveled will go up as well. Well, remember, if one thing goes down and the other variable goes down, that's still a positive correlation because they're going in the same direction. Read this one here. As tread on your car's tires decreases, so as tread goes down, the traction is going to decrease as well. You're going to be losing traction as you lose tread on your car. This is also a positive correlation. And make sure you read that red paragraph up here. Uh, you know, right here, a positive correlation also exists in one decreases and the other also decreases. That's probably not the, the best wording there, but as one variable decreases, tread, the other variable can decrease, traction. That's a positive correlation. They're both going in the same direction. So you're probably guessing these last two are going to be negative, and let's make sure we understand that. As the train speed increases, so as speed goes up, the length of time that it will take the train to get to its destination, that length of time will go down. Speed increases, the length of time to get there will decrease. That's a negative correlation. And I probably did emphasize this in the goals and objective videos I did for this. Don't think of positive as being good and negative as being bad. That has nothing to do with correlation and the relationship between any two variables. It's just about how they interact. Train speeds going up. How long does it take you to get there? That's going to go down. Hence a negative correlation. And then our last one here, as a car decreases speed, <laughs> check this out. So as speed goes down, the travel time is going to go up. If you travel real slow in your car and you're heading somewhere, it's going to take you a lot longer. The time that it takes to get there is going to go up. So since these two variables are kind of going in opposite directions, we have a negative correlation there as well. And there you have it. That's two more examples uh, covering problems 14 and 15 in the ATIT study manual, the mathematics sections quiz. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.